In this presentation, you will see the method used to take clinical dental photographs of the face and mouth. These are made up of three extraoral and five intraoral photos. This is the usual series of photos used in orthodontics and may also be used in other dental practices providing a record of pre, during and post treatment phases. Although recommendations for the aperture are provided, they may differ depending on the camera used. It is also recommended that you check each photograph that you have just taken by looking at the screen at the back of the camera so that if it hasn't worked, you can delete it and can retake the photo straight away. Remember to access the patient's records to see what clinical photographs have been requested and then gather all necessary equipment, including the camera and flash, sterilise cheek and lip retractors, and mouth mirrors. When you call your patient in, communicate effectively by explaining to them what you are about to do, making them feel comfortable by telling them that this process is relatively quick and easy. Remember to gain and record consent. Now you are ready to take these photographs, starting with the extra oral photos. Wash your hands and open the sterilised pouches. Leave the cheek and lip retractors and mirrors on these open pouches until you are ready to use them. In this video you will see the method used to take clinical dental, dental photographs of the face and mouth. Now get the camera. Using the camera neck strap will prevent the camera from being accidentally dropped. Wash your hands again and put on disposable gloves. Ask your patient to stand with their back to the wall, facing you, but check that they are not leaning on the wall as this could create a shadow in, in the photograph. Patients need to be at eye level with you so that the camera is at the same level. If they are much taller than you, the patient may need to be seated. And if they are much shorter, then you may need to be seated. Turn your camera on as well as the flash and set the aperture at 5.6. Stand approximately one to two meters away from the patient. Hold the camera vertically, then manually focus the camera by turning the lens slowly to the left and right until the image is clear. The background wall behind the patient needs to be neutral and clean. It is important that the patient's head is not tilted up or down or to the side and that their hair is away from their face and both ears, ears symmetrical. Neckline and frame of shoulders are visible. Glasses, bulky jumpers, scarves and chunky facial and oral jewellery must be removed. The first three photos that you will take are the facial photos and are made up of the frontal photo taken at rest, no smile. Frontal photo with the patient smiling. And profile photo at rest. This photo requires the patient to turn their whole body to the side, looking away from you at 90 degrees. Once this photo is taken, they can now stand facing you. Now the five intraoral photographs are taken. Change the camera aperture setting to 22 and these photos are taken with the camera in its normal position. Ask the patient to lick their lips. This will help slide the retractors easily into their mouth. Depending on the age of the patient or the size of their mouth, you will need to select large or small cheek retractors. Firstly, take the anterior view with the patient biting in normal occlusion with cheek retractors stretched as far as possible away from the teeth and gums, allowing a good clear view of the teeth. You want the whole arch in focus. Make sure that the patient is not tilting the head so that the mouth and occlusal plane is horizontal with the floor. Now take a photo of the right side of the mouth still in occlusion, focusing on the labial aspects of the canine and having the buccal aspects of the molar in clear view as far back in the mouth as possible. Now perform the same on the left side of the mouth. Finally, take the maxillary and mandibular occlusal photographs using the occlusal mirror and lip retractor. The camera aperture setting is now at 32. 
it is recommended you warm the mirrors prior to placing these in the mouth as this will prevent fogging the mirror so that we have a clear view of the whole occlusal arch. Don't have them too hot or they could burn the mouth. The camera needs to be focused on the image in the mirror and include all the teeth. Again, don't tilt the patient's head. The mandibular occlusal photo requires the tongue to be placed behind the mirror if possible as this will prevent the blocking the view of the lower teeth by the tongue. At the end of this procedure, remember to clear your equipment away from the work area, decontaminate this area, including the camera and equipment, sterilising the retractors and mirrors. Finally, check and format the photographs as required, storing them in the computer and into the patient's file.